Uh, so this book is Krishna Devaraya, King of Kings, and it's really about his life. Uh, there wasn't too much detail about his life that I found, so I had to imagine a lot of it. Um, Good Earth actually asked me to come up with a story about any king of India that I wish to write about. And since Hampi has been a great favorite of mine as a destination, uh, and I feel that South Indian kings haven't been given that much uh, uh, coverage in Indian history books. Uh, very few kids know much about Krish Devaraya, so for me it was a natural choice to pick him as my subject for the book. Well, I've always felt history is a form of fiction anyway. Uh, history is always one person's version of what really happened, usually the victors. So, fictionalizing history is not such a difficult thing. But what I did do was uh, add in characters that history does not say even existed. I gave uh, Krishnadevaraya a daughter and I gave her a great granddaughter. And I did that because there was so little information available about Krishnadevaraya's life. Uh, a lot of information available about his political life, very little about his personal life. So I thought the narrator of the story uh, could be somebody who knew him personally and knew a little bit about his professional life as well. I thought that would add heft and authenticity to the narrative and that's why I created this person. History does not say that he had a daughter but it does not also say that he did not have a daughter so I took that kind of liberty with the narrative. Well, it's a gorgeously illustrated picture book so there's plenty for children to enjoy just looking at the pictures themselves. Uh, as for the story, it features a young protagonist who is about 8 or 9 years old. I think they will enjoy uh, her questioning of her grandmother. I think they will be able to identify with how they speak to their grandmothers themselves. Uh, because that is universal and it is timeless, the way a child uh, interacts with a grandparent. So, since those are the main protagonists, that they will enjoy. Plus, all the little nuggets of information that you may not get in a history textbook about Krishnadevaraya himself. So, those are the kinds of things that I think children will enjoy about this book. Uh, it's a book about history, essentially, so definitely history teachers can find a lot to, uh, you know, fill up and punctuate their lessons of history with, by bringing in personal details, by bringing in trivia about food. So there's a lot of that in this. There's a lot of uh, little bits of trivia which may not be in a textbook, so that is one good thing to do. Uh, geography teachers, for geography teachers, there's, there are some great maps which talk about the uh, region itself the rivers that flow, even his, even the descriptions of his political battles involve talk about the geography of the region. So, history can be used to teach uh, geography in a very fine way. The story itself is a fictional story against the backdrop of history. So, English teachers can use it as an illustration of how to write uh, historical fiction. That would be great. But I see it more uh, also as a family book, you know, for parents who want to take their children to Hampi, for teachers and schools that want to take their children to Hampi because Hampi, as I remember it as a child, was not a very child-friendly place. It's usually very hot and children are not interested in ruins. To, to, to spark the interest in such a kind of a place, it's better if they have a context of what actually happened there through a gorgeously illustrated picture book like this. So, once they have that vision in their mind, they will see it come alive when they go there. Uh, librarians, I mean, the options are endless. You can do quizzes, you can do coloring activities because you can tell them so many things about how people dressed and what they wore, uh, things like that. So, plenty, plenty that, uh, that teachers and parents and librarians can do with this book. 